بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر سٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر ادری شانی ورکنگ ایز اسسٹم پروفیسر آف میڈیسن ان الائڈ ہاسپٹل فیصل آباد میڈیکل یونیورسٹی ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ون آف دی ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک دا انویسٹیگیشن آف دی ریسپیٹری ڈیزیزز سو ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس انویسٹیگیشن آف دی ریسپیٹری ڈیزیز از ویری ویری امپورٹنٹ ان دی سینیریو آف دی کرونا وائرس بیکاز کرونا وائرس از ون آف دی ڈیزیز وچ میجرلی افیکٹس دی لنگ and ultimately it leads to respiratory failure and uh, uh, death rate is very high in coronavirus. So it's very, very important to know about the investigation of the respiratory diseases. When you talk about the investigation of the respiratory diseases, radiology is one of the essential component of investigation of the most of the chest symptoms. Some diseases like such as tuberculosis and lung cancer may be undetectable on clinical examination but they are obvious on chest x-ray so x-ray chest is excellent uh, one of the excellent investigation or the baseline investigation which is very portable and can also be easily done however asthma and chronic bronchitis may be associated with a normal chest x-ray in which you have to compare the previous film as well so whenever you see any uh, chest x-ray always ask the patient or attendant does the patient has previous x-ray or not and you always compare the previous x-ray with the new x-ray if there are new changes then you can comment accordingly dear students remember when you are seeing the x-ray of the chest you are seeing basically different things so when you are seeing x-ray chest you have to concentrate on the position of the trachea and the bronchi and the bronchovascular marking you have to concentrate on the lung volume and its Uh, underlying opacities as well so you have to see the diaphragm in some of the conditions the diaphragm may have dented or may have flat or may be uh, hyperinflated so all these may be associated with the position of the diaphragm similarly overcrowding of the ribs can also be seen in some of the conditions so in x-ray you see trachea bronchus bronchovascular marking lung parenchyma diaphragm the position of the ribs so x-ray chest you look at the shape and bony structure of the chest wall whether the trachea is central whether the diaphragm is elevated or flat shape size and position of the heart shape size and position of the heart shadows shape and size of the any lung pathology and vascular shadowing so collapse and collapse of the uh, one of the lung or uh, lobar and the consolidation are the common finding to be seen on x-ray chest simple pneumonia is very easily diagnosed on x-ray chest loss of volume or corroding of the ribs are the best indicator of the lobar collapse collapse of the left upper lobe you can see in this x-ray dear student you are seeing uh, this trachea has been shifted towards the left side if you compare the both lung side the the lung area is seen on this side this side there is a collapse of the left lobe with just translucency in the left side this is the basically collapse of the left lobe and heart and apex speed has been deviated towards the left side because of the collapse as well so this is the one of the x-ray showing the collapse of the left upper lobe so what are the causes of the uh, lungs it may be enlarged tracheobronchial lymph nodes it may be inhaled for a body like peanuts in children it may be bronchial cause of plugs it may be retained secretions post operatively or in debilitated patients can also involve the lobe collapse pleural fissures uh, need to be larger than 250 to 500 ml to cause much more than blunting of the cause of phrenic angle so The pleurophyne can also be diagnosed on x-ray but this pleurophyne needs to be more than 250 to 500 ml to make the uh, CP angle obliterated. On erect film, they may, they may produce crestic shadow with a curved approach raising into the axilla. The second finding is the fibrosis. The fibrosis may be localized causing sticking shadow and the accompanying loss of the lung volume causing mediastinal structure to move towards the same side we will be showing in the coming lecture the pleural fian and the fibrosis so that you should be clear about the finding of the x-ray 
so dear students you can uh, very uh, clearly see on the on this x-ray the cp angle as compared to the right lung cp angle is sharp and compared to this the cp angle is obliterated this is the classical finding of the plural pn you see such type of finding on x-ray so this is plural pn you see plural pn on x-ray it means the fluor figure is at least more than 250 to 500 ml the second slide showing second x-ray showing if you compare both lungs the right side of the lung is smaller volume as compared to the left lung similarly if you compare the diaphragm it has been elevated and it has been elevated and centered inside the mid of the diaphragm because of the fibrosis inside the lung so this patient is having fibrosis of the right side of the lung ultimately leading to reduced lung lung volume dear students rounded shadows and milieu mottings is another feature of the uh, you see in the x-ray lung cancer is the commonest cause of large rounded shadow but many other causes are also recognized with the round shadow on the x-ray milieu mottings what is milieu mottings basically is a minute opacities almost 1 to 3 mm in size the commonest cause of milieu mottings is tuberculosis but only the mottling can also be seen in some other condition like pneumoconiosis, sarcoidosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis as well. In the coming slide, we will discuss the, some of the downward shadows and their underlying diagnosis and the mottling and the midi mottling as well. Dear student, basically you are seeing uh, multiple uh, downward opacities in the left lung. You can see this opacity, the second opacity, the third downward opacity, bile-like opacity, the, again, on the right side of the lung, this bile like opacity again, and these are the multiple opacity inside the lung. Basically, this is the X-ray of the patient with metastatic lung disease. This is a case of rectal carcinoma, and this rectal carcinoma has metastasis in the lungs. So this is the round opacity with metastasis. Dear students, uh, this is the X-ray of a patient who is smoker who is a chain smoker for last almost 35 years. Now he presented to OPD with hemoptasis, shortness of breath and cachexia. And on X-ray finding, there was a irregular rounded opacity involving the right side of the middle zone. So this is basically a bronchogenic carcinoma involving the right middle zone of the lung. So again, uh, dear students, this is another Smoker patients having 20 pack year history of heavy smoking, no present with cachexia and recurrent chest infection, and sometimes often and homoptesis. Basically, basically irregular carcinoma evolving the left middle zone. Millery mottling. Dear student, you can see small, minute opacities involving the both of the lungs. This is classical of miliary mottling. This patient was a 25-year-old uh, male who was HIV positive, presented with low-grade fever for last three weeks' time, associated with cough, sputum, and shortness of breath. This is the classical example of miliary mottling. Yes, again, miliary mottling. You can clearly see small 1 to 3 millimeter size opacities in both lungs. This is another case of miliary mottling. So again a presentation of the miliary mottling. This patient was put on steroid for some respiratory disease like asthma and ultimately this patient developed miliary mottling because of the long term steroid use he, he became immunocompromised and then ultimately he led to the miliary mottling as well. This again tuberculosis uh, patient. Dear students, uh, the third commonest investigation usually done in respiratory disease is the CT scan of the chest. This provides excellent images of the lungs and the mediastinal structure. So, if you are clearly uh, wanted to see the mediastinal structures, you go with the CT scan of the chest. CT scan of the chest is essential in staging of the bronchial carcinoma. 
so all patient who are having some uh, bronchogenic carcinoma on x-ray chest you go with the ct scan of the chest with or without contrast you can uh, stage the bronchial carcinoma by seeing the size of the tumor the donor involvement in the metastasis and the vein of the body astrium and the pleural and chest wall ct guided needle biopsy is sometimes needed to make the histopathological diagnosis of the peripheral masses as well so always uh, see the adrenals and the liver in patient with the respiratory diseases because liver and adrenals is commonly involved for the metastasis of the bronchogenic carcinoma dear student hsct you will come across uh, uh, many time on clinical side in our ward the hsct is commonly done in patient to, to see the lung parenchyma in this uh, high resolution as the name indicates high resolution ct scan in which 1 to 2 mm thickness scan is done with 10 to 20 mm intervals to assess the diffuse inflammatory or infective parenchymal disease sometimes we are not sure about that this patient is having bronchiectasis or some other disease so hsct has got sensitivity and specificity of more than 90% for the diagnosis of the bronchiectasis we are not sure whether the patient having bronchiectasis high resolution ct scan of the chest is the best test to diagnose HSCT also distinguish between the emphysema from other diffuse lung diseases as well. Similarly, it also differentiate between the opportunistic infection like pneumocystis, carinia, or some of the other diseases as well. And if you are suspecting lymphangitis, carcinomatosis, then HSCT is also a good modality to be performed in patient with lymphangitis, carcinomatosis. multi slice ct scanner is another uh, developing modality this is basically done to diagnose pulmonary embolism so pulmonary embolism can also very easily diagnose on multi slice ct scanner mri is less valuable as compared to the ct scan if the mri is associated with ecg getting a loss accurate imaging of the heart and aortic aneurysm so but it's less commonly used in respiratory disease pet scan uh, is uh, the newest modality what happens in pet scan the tumors like bronchogenic carcinoma take up the labeled fluorodeoxy glucose which emits positron that can be imaged and help to differentiate between the benign from the malignant tumors so pet scan if you are not clear the uh, the lesion inside the lung is benign or malignant you go with the pet scan in bronchial carcinoma pet scanning combined with the ct scan is now the investigation of the choice for the assessing the lymph nodes and the metastatic disease scintigraphy is uh, less commonly used nowadays to diagnose pulmonary embolism nowadays uh, we go with the d dimers dear students if any patient you see any patient with sudden short of breath having uh, some orthopedic or gynecological or obstetric surgery always consider it may be case of pulmonary embolism especially after 3 to 5 days of the surgery so in this case you go with the d dimers which is done on the blood and the ct scan pulmonary angiography which can differentiate between the site of the pulmonary embolism whether there is pulmonary embolism is there or not so perfusion scan is also uh, can also be used to diagnose the pulmonary embolism similarly ventilation perfusion scan is also can also be done to diagnose the pulmonary embolism you can see the ventilation perfusion scan there is a quiescent area having a decrease ventilation so these can also be detect to have the pulmonary embolism however in ventilation perfusion scan the better test the investigation of choice is ct pulmonary angiography ultrasound is less commonly used for the diagnosis of the disease of the respiratory system however ultrasound is usually uh, uh, done to diagnose or, or to take the small pleural fluid for the aspiration we usually uh, go with the ultrasound of the chest sometime for the safe placement of the intercostal drain chest tube we can also use the ultrasound
dear students uh, respiratory function test you may come across with uh, many of the patients who are having COPD emphysema asthma psychosis or sometimes asthma as well the respiratory function tests are very very important basically they are done to see the air flow limitation to see it's a very re relatively simple test to perform and you have got a lot of information from the lung parenchyma and the air flow limitation so ventilative function the tests are used mainly to assess the degree of air flow limitation during the expiration dear student these are some of the tests which are performed in lung function test you may come across with some of the terms like peak expiratory flow rate and this is done to monitor the change in the air flow limitation in asthma and this is portable post expiratory water volume post water capacity post expiratory volume post water capacity flow volume loops these are the some of the terms which are used in lung function test and dr ji sir already uh, discussed with you in the online classes so i will not go in the details you can also have already uh, going through uh, this with dr ji sir on online class so these are the some of the spirometer findings like this is the normal finding this is the restrictive pattern and this is the air flow limitation so peak expiratory rate flow rate is extremely simple and cheap test in which patient takes a full inspiration to the, to a total lung capacity then it is allowed to blow out forcefully into the peak flow meter the best of the three times is recorded then it is measured so dear student this is the peak flow meter you can see the patient take deep breath and then patient blow forcefully in this flow meter and three time reading is noted best of the three is taken as the result so these are the some of the uh, terms which are you total lung capacity inspiratory residual volume the tidal volume functional residual capacity vital capacity and the residual volume flow volume loops uh, these are the some of the flow volume loops you can see severe air flow limitation like this loop similarly extra thoracic take care of section like this loop and patient with interthoracic large airway of section like this loop so transfer factor lung volume are measured in lung function test another important test uh, dear student is measurement of the blood gases so depending upon the measurement of the blood gases we categorize the patient as type 1 respiratory failure and type 2 respiratory failure in type re type 1 respiratory failure oxygen saturation is markedly decreased in type 2 respiratory failure co2 retention is markedly increased in type 1 respiratory failure with hypoxemia we give the cpap in type 2 respiratory failure with hypercapnia we raise level of the carbon dioxide we give the bipap so in some cases we go with the sputum cytology for uh, sputum culture and sensitivity even with the mycobacterium and acer for bacilli as well in some patient we go with the x-ray test like 6 minute walk test uh, this is just for the academic purpose to see the x-ray tolerance of the patient with respiratory disease so pure pure fluid this is the almost last slide so pure fluid aspiration when we take the fluid ul ultrasound guided or without ultrasound guided guided you you have to consider whether the pure fluid is transurative or exudative if the patient is having transurative pure fluid in which the proteins are less than 2.5 or some cases 3.0 the causes may be ccf or hypoproteinemia or some other condition grossly if the pure fluid aspirate showing exudate then it may be underlying tuberculosis or malignancy and some of the other conditions as well in some cases if you are not sure about the diagnosis the pure biopsy is usually done and usually pure biopsy is done by the pulmonologist as well pets uh, video assisted thoracoscopic lung biopsy you may come to call some of the cases and this is usually done by the pulmonologist chest intubation sometimes done to diagnose some of the uh, empyema nodal biopsy skin pig test are also done in patient bronchoscopy is another uh, recent advancement mortality you can see 
in bronchoscopy the bronchoscope is passed through the nose you go through the terminates inside the posterior pharynx then go along the trachea and then you go to the carinia and the through the carinia you can go with the different segments of the lungs as well you can see how the picture is this is the carina you there you are seeing the different segments of the lung bronchioles so this is the fibroptic bronchoscopy you can see uh, the bronchoscopy is done in a light hospital by professor amar sen sahab uh, uh, as a pulmonologist so indication of the uh, bronchoscopy is that if the any lesion of the lung having recurring biopsy you can go with the bronchoscopy any patient having lesions associated with hemoptysis stridor or posterior sputum cytology for bilin cell these are the indication of the bronchoscopy or collection of the bronchial secretions for bacteriology like tuberculosis you can also go with the bronchoscopy if the patient having recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis infiltrative lung disease or collapse lobe or for aspiration of the mucus plug you can go with the bronchoscopy